Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Renee Barabo, and I am very happy to be here with you. Hi, everyone. I'm Sandra Ingerman, and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. And um, my glasses are not actually part of the show, although we're actually doing a show <laughs> today. So it's just kind of synchronistic, but I, I hurt my eye, and life just happens, everybody. You know that. And so um, we didn't want to miss another show. So um, wearing my uh, Hollywood star glasses. What do you what do you think? <laughs> so, I was thinking they were the void glasses that we were stepping into. <laughs> that you got your glasses on for the entering the void. <laughs> they're all ready to enter the void. So, anybody who's familiar with my work, because um, I started writing about the void in medicine for the earth so that was in um, the late 1990s i started writing about the void and i've always loved the void and i renee and i have taught you the process of transfiguration where you go inside yourself and you imagine a golden star or a golden moon or a golden sun uh, growing inside of you and you fill every cell of your body with that and then you emanate that out into the world and that's a classic form of, of fe uh, bringing feminine power into healing because it really is healing um, the world by who you are instead of what you do by your presence in the world and so i've been teaching that since uh, 2000 but when I first started uh, transfiguring, I noticed that instead of this bright golden light, I was complete blackness, just mm -hmm. complete blackness. And um, so I said to my uh, teacher, Isis, at the time, I said, Isis, what's happening? I'm, I'm darkness. I'm, I'm, I'm not the light. And she said to me that before the light, is the void everything is created from the void everything is not created from the light first everything is created from the void and as many of you have probably heard if you study different spiritual traditions um the void is that place of everything and nothingness you know you go there and I like to go there on holiday, on vacation, that's where I go to relax. And a lot of my students do too, since I turned them on to my, my vacation location. Um, it's, there's nothing there. It's complete silent, it's complete blackness, and there's nothing. But yet, you can feel this fertile energy. I mean, it's amazing. And so in Buddhism, it's talked about as, as the place of nothingness and everything. Um, to me, it's just an incredible place of, of fertility. And when I was um, in Egypt, and um, I can't remember if it was my trip on 1998 or 1999, we got permission to sit in the uh, next to the Sphinx, and um, and it was really hot, and I was always wearing black and a black skirt and trying to be culturally correct, and it was over a hundred degrees, and um, so I found this little corner in the Sphinx, and I just kind of curled up and I put my hat over my head, and I had the most spontaneous vision. I was up in the void and I saw the face of a kitten forming in the void and um, then the void turned into jello and the kitten popped through and uh, was born onto earth and the message that I got um, in that uh, spontaneous vision was um, was that I, I just got to witness the first time Cat ever um, was born on this earth, which was an amazing mm. thing. And I'm sure Renee can relate to that with Sammy. Um, and so I started to, um, I'm really interested in teaching people about creation manifestation. 
And um, so I started to teach people creation and manifestation using the void because um, in all esoteric literature on creation and manifestation, you have to engage your invisible senses to see, hear, feel, taste, smell what you're trying to manifest as if it's already happened. So, you know, you're seeing the children laughing, you're seeing your partner excited that you've got this letter, that you just got a raise or a promotion on a job, you hear the sound of the trucks outside, you know, you really put yourself in the image and you uh, live it as if it's happening, not as if you're watching TV, but live it as if it's happening. And uh, a friend of mine and I just discovered at the same time that if you do that uh, sensory, all your senses uh, in the void, um, it exponentializes the ability to manifest. That was a that was like a whole week's lesson in six minutes. So <laughs> you'll have to go back and listen to that one. In the wind work, it's a little it's the the void energy. I call it gap energy, mm -hmm. and and it's, it's probably we're talking about a similar thing. And in in working with the winds, they taught me about uh, five dynamic processes of creation, and they're voids but they're they they come they come across differently um there's the chaos void and then there's the process order void and there's the gestation like the internal womb void and the, the void in nature and then there's the 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 oppositional void the opposition between two things where there's also a space energy between those and and so we work a lot in that gap space because I really believe at the end of every cycle, there is a space for you to, uh, you know, like Sanders vacation spot to, to be with and actually recreate the next aspect of yourself uh, before you even move on to it. And so um, I guess I've never looked at it as blackness, but if I think about uh, Fujin, the wind, you know where the, this came into being was they were over the abyss and they were fishing in the abyss for for this or um you know the australian wind where they it was flattened like a pancake where the it was a, a darkened space and when the wind movement came in it enlivened the creation so so yeah i think we're talking about something similar with a with a different twist on it Right, absolutely. And I, I forgot to uh, share with everybody that why we're talking about the void is um, I got inspired when I saw some of the web photos on online and um, and the talk about how the planets are not moving and the galaxies are not moving, but space is growing. And mm -hmm. that thrilled me immensely um, because that means there's more void for us to uh, work with and I found it a very interesting concept that space is actually growing. Yeah that's kind of an interesting thing like you know that we're like kind of condensing down on upon ourselves lately and and yet space is opening up with all these possibilities for us to you know really shift into and, and I think that's that's really fascinating, you know, and then I think the more we learn about space, the, the the smaller we really become as, you know, those little pinheads you talk about, Sandra, about, you know, that we're really just a pinhead in, in the, a moment of four, four or five billion years of time. And, you know, it's imagine, I probably wonder how many times space has opened up and closed up and, you know, gobbled us up. It'd be really a curious situation here. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it's, um, you know, for those of you who get stressed out, um, I, I teach in my workshops and I do it myself, where you just hold the intention and it can be through a meditation or a journey, just hold the intention to go to the void and just let yourself float, let you just float and feel that nothingness but feel that everythingness because again you can transfigure into the void so 
it's the place right before creation. So you can actually have what's considered nothing but everything filling up your whole entire system. And then with using the power of intention of um, seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, smelling what it is that you would like to um, dream about and actually see this dream manifest. Of course, if it's for the whole planet, you know, there's a time lag on this. We, we don't know when that's going to manifest. But um, I've used it uh, in all kinds of ways to, uh, for the goodness, I don't use it as power over or control, but of things that, you know, a project that I'm working on, something that I know I can do, I, I form everything in the void first, um, and I get uh, the whole plan together. Uh, first, I hear people talking to me and saying, oh, Sandra, I can't believe that you actually manifested that. That's mm. incredible. <laughs> and I feel myself picking up the book and smelling the pages. You get the point. What mm -hmm. uh, The trouble with manifestation in our culture is people manifest like it's a movie where you have to put yourself in the movie and you have to live the movie. And it's amazing what I've been able to bring into my life. It's amazing what I haven't been able to bring into my life, too. Um, Neville, uh, Neville was one of the great manifestors. He, um, he was around in the 1930s, and, um, and it was the Depression. So he mostly uh, lectured on how to manifest money and how to manifest houses. But you can see with his work, I think I have 13 or 14 of his books, um, you can see with his work everything is the same, but it's about intention. And he could manifest anything for anybody, but when it came to uh, something that was really important to him, a new business that he wanted to manifest, he just couldn't do it. So, you know, it's just interesting that um, there are things that are real easy for us. The universe works in cooperation. We get our intention. We get our invisible senses working and alive, and we get our passion and our heart into it. And we can manifest some really good things for ourselves and the planet. Yeah, I, I tend to be a pretty good manifester. And I really think it's because I really keep my manifestation to things that I really need, like really the things that because if I need it, like, I mean, this is a silly example, but one of my needs in life is clean lines, like, you know, so, so a lot of my manifestations are around having clean lines, you know, like, you know, apartments that came up or things that came up, because I think it's, if we really look to to look at our manifestations. I always look at, well, what do I really need in my world? You know, like sometimes there I've manifested things that I, I didn't need. And you know what? It always came to bite me back in the butt. And so I, I really kept it to really practical things that had meaning or, you know, were of service to other people. Like what you were saying with Neville is that, you know, it's easier to manifest sometimes to help other people than you know, if we, we're, we're being self-centered in what we think we deserve. I mean, deserving always gets me into trouble. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's a control issue, you know, our ego <laughs> to control. I deserve. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I, I like what you were saying about, you know, I think I'm going to go into the void to write, finish writing that next book next year, yeah. because it must be in there because it's been hounding me for a long time. So maybe if I went there, I would be more of a proficient writer because I know you certainly are. Um, yeah, and the exciting news is um, I just wrote a new book with Lynn Andrews, uh, not Lynn Andrews, I'm sorry, uh, Lynn Roberts. We wrote Speaking in Nature together, and we just signed the contract with Union Square yesterday. And so the book will be out um, next fall, and it's about how to walk through the darkness. Mm. Um, it's autobiographical about my life and Lynn's life and how we got through the really challenges times that we were in. 
So yeah, a lot of that got manifested in the void too. <laughs> right. So that that's great. Um, also, I put a, a notice up on the shaman's cave in the group about you know that the shaman's cave has grown to about thirty thousand people, and we don't have thirty thousand followers on YouTube yet. So we're inviting you to, to subscribe to us on YouTube. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't get notices in the mail. It just helps us reach more people and and keep the show alive. And, and we're really invested in keeping it alive. It's something that, you know, if we pull it out of the void and we keep it going and the void keeps giving us the information about what to share next. And so many of you always tell us about how important it is to you that we, we have this conversation. And so we, we really would like you to hit the subscribe button. Yeah, I, I watch a lot of, um, well, some YouTube shows on uh, different uh, hobbies that I'm interested in. And um, boy, they're merciless on how many times they ask you to subscribe <laughs> and, and like the show. and. We don't want to do that, but um, we are a community and we're teaching about community support. And it doesn't take much to subscribe to our show. It just means pushing a button. That's it. So thank you, everyone, for supporting us. It's an actual show of support that um, helps Renee and I see that um, you like the show and we should keep doing the show because we love doing it and we hope you love having us come into your home or your phone or wherever you are and nature gardening um every other week or or once a week as many times as we do it so we love you and we send you many blessings and um and with the power of of reciprocity um if you subscribe and like our show it really helps keep us going a lot longer. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Or we're going to actually, for the fall, we're going to be going every other week. So we will see you in two weeks. But in the middle week, we will be uh, sharing a, a repeat that thousands and thousands of people have liked. We're, we're going through the list of shows we've really liked to create and shows that other people have really liked. And also check your email because Sandra and I have a special event coming up on November 12th. And you'll find out about it in your email. Thank you. And it's going to be great. So check it out. Okay. Bye, everyone.